question of the week. This week our question is about dyno correction factor. What is that? Have you had your car put on the dyno? Yes. Did you get a dyno sheet? Yes. How much power did your car make? The dyno sheet says 409 horsepower. 409 horsepower. So here's the question. This is for Nigel and for you at home. Is that how much power your car made? I want to say yes. You want to say yes. Everybody want, watching wants to say yes. So a dyno is a tool to measure how much power your car makes. And it's a very handy tool to do that. It's a very handy tool because you're, you're, you're doing this in a controlled environment. So the idea is that you can bring your car back to this dyno, test different modifications, test changes, and see what the difference those changes make. The thing you have to factor in is conditions change. You know, like what, right now, we're in the middle of winter. Yesterday, when we got into the shop, it was 10 degrees below zero. I'm not saying that that's a great time to tune your car, but let's say you tune your car in this, this really drastic winter environment, right? And then you go out in the summer or the fall and you, you make some changes and you have to come back to the dyno and get the car tuned again. If you don't compensate for those changes in condition, those numbers on the dyno from, from one set of conditions to the, to the other extreme, those aren't really going to be comparable. So there's something applied called a dyno correction factor. So what that does is it's the, the purpose of this is to make those two completely different environments that you're testing in comparable so you can see how much power your car gained or lost. What this amounts to is basically a multiplication factor that is, that is accounting for conditions that are not optimal. So Nigel, would you have, did you know that there was a dyno correction factor when you, when you had your car dyno? No. And I'd be willing to bet you that it's probably not on your dyno sheet. It's gonna be in the ballpark of say 20 to 25%. So it, it, and it varies, like that's another point. It's like, again, like, the conditions and the, the multiplication factor to standardize the result today, where it's you know 10 degrees out versus on a 100 degree day, and, and at this elevation versus sea level, it's always going to be different. It's always going to be changing. I've gotten a non-corrected dyno sheet, but it's something that the, you know Harvey the tuner had to go in and specifically manually set the correction factor to zero to give me a, an actual uncorrected dyno sheet. It's something that is pretty unusual. I, and I've, I've only gotten it when I've asked for it, and it's not something that's easy to get. And a lot of times, dyno sheets do not tell you what the correction factor is. So like you said, there was a 20 to 25% margin. Where does, that, where does that drop down closer to zero, and when is, the, when is the number on the sheet more accurate? What I'm most familiar with is in, in our conditions here at this elevation, because this is the, most, the majority of the time when we're playing around with our car in a dyno, this is the situation. So like optimal conditions are, are going to be basically sea level with low humidity and optimal temp temperature, let's say 65 degrees out, right? So I'm sure that like closer to optimal conditions at sea level, it should be, you know, I would hope, you know, down something like a, a zero or single digit correction factor. So if I want to go race in a series that has a power to weight ratio, mm -hmm. you know, dyno factor is going to... It's a big part of that. It's going to be a part of that. How do, how do you know... Um, if m me and my competitors are all using the same correction factor. Say NASA, for instance, where in time trials they have a power to weight class, they actually tell you the SAE correction factor that needs to be applied to the dyno uh, to get an accurate reading. Um, and so that whoever, like when you're, when you're reading through the rules and the requirements, you would need to know what that correction factor is and be able to tell that to the person that's operating the dyno and then they, should, they need to be able to plug that correction factor in to make sure that the dyno calculates it correctly. And again, this is looking at you know, elevation, atmospheric conditions like barometric pressure, temperature, humidity. All of those factors are the data points that are going into the dyno with the correction factor, you know, weighting those, those factors based on this correction factor and then applying it to the, to the number it puts out. The other, the other thing that's interesting is the type of dyno will respond differently differently or is affected differently to efficiency. So like eddy current dynos like a dyno dynamics or mainline or a, a uh, uh, Mustang dyno generally are going to read lower because, I don't know, just, just because they do, they, they seem to be less optimistic. Something like a dyno pack where the dyno is actually bolted to the hubs and you take the wheels and tires out of it, 
generally retire because you've taken away a lot of the rotating inertia that the car is having to overcome. A dyno jet where you're accelerating a drum, it's a slightly different calculation and a lot of times those tend to be more affected by a correction factor and so they tend to rate higher. So there's, there's some variations even in, in types of dynos in the way that the dyno actually reads you know, the horsepower number in the first place. So besides a dyno, is there another way to calculate horsepower accurately? Well, there is. So horsepower is work. Work is force times distance. And so if you know the mass of your car, the weight of the car, and you know, you know the rate of acceleration, you can uh, calculate basically how much, how much power was used or how much power was needed to, to accelerate a car. So this is where you know, guys that go to the drag strip, um, you know, if they know what their time is in a quarter mile and they, and they know pretty accurately what the weight of the car is, that gives you the tools to also calculate how much power the car is making. In fact, the Cobb Axis port will calculate horsepower and it does it based on rate of acceleration. You know, if Cobb is making an Axis port for a 2020 STI, they know pretty close how much 2020 STI weighs and so they can plug that weight in there and then they can very easily with all the data that's going to an Axis port calculate its rate of acceleration and so they can give you an approximation of horsepower. And in some ways, knowing, you know, doing a calculation based on the rate and a real world acceleration is in some ways a little bit more accurate way to calculate it, but it's that it's that comparative data. That's that's the piece that's something that like an accurate measure is missing because you need to have some way to compare that data and that's again where the dyno correction factor comes in. The big question is, is the number on the dyno sheet actually how much power my car is making? The number on the dyno sheet is how much power your car would make at sea level in perfect conditions. So, so in perfect conditions, that's how much power your car would make, but that's not how much power it actually made on the day of. Well, thanks everybody for checking out the question of the week. Remember, we do this every week, and you can submit your questions below or in our messy on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned. Flat